Moment of truth. This is for all the marbles. Oh, shnikes. Hello. <laughs> I'm finally here. How are you? That was way, why was that so difficult? I think it just like, gave us more suspense. This is just, it's just. Yeah, it was just like such a better build up. Now we're here. Such a better build up. I like a good tease. Yeah, we love a good tease. How are What's you? Up? I see you put on a sweater for me. I did. I it's from really Primark. Special. Don't get too excited. It's from where? Primark. Oh, honestly, Primark is where it's at. That's like the universe's best kept secret. The you get a whole wardrobe of like a hundred and fifty dollars. It's great. It's, ins it's insane. Like, there's so all that their hoodies are so good. Like, really, it's it's cheap stuff, but it's I'm not mad at it. It's I pretty cozy. Like, I went through this phase where I just wore this like weird turtle. I was like into. I had like a turtleneck phase like five <laughs> years ago, maybe, and I got them all from Primark and it was just like, it was my jam. And then I just remember looking back at a photo one day and I was like, this, this has to end. This phase <laughs> needs to be over in my life. So Primark had a good run for me. Yeah. There's some things that don't last like one yeah. wash. It's like a one, <laughs> one wear. Yeah, exactly. Did you really just give out your phone number on social media? I did. And I actually, I'm so, I'm really <laughs> How bored are you? <laughs> well, everyone, everyone's being like, is this really you? Is this really you? And I'm like sending back selfies. I'm like, yes, it's really me. But like <laughs> now, I, now I have like 3,000 texts in my inbox. And I'm like, oh my God, I need a second. Like it's going to take I me just a second. Photos I'm of my cats. What? I, I, I texted you photos of my cats. So well, yeah, hopefully you'll find really, Your cat's really cute. He's pretty sweet, right? His name is yes. Marshall. Marshall. He's like super white and fluffy. I like them. Um, yeah, I sent you photos. So hopefully you'll find that in your 3,000 texts. Did you get any like really weird messages so far? Well, everyone's just being like, this is definitely a bot. And I'm just like sending back a selfie or like I sent somebody back like a video of my dad. And I'm like, no, I swear to God, it's really me. <laughs> I'm, like, Bob very Fletcher. Hard to I'm like, this Bob Fletcher just like chilling on the couch right now. Like, I swear <laughs> this is actually happening. <laughs> so, yeah, real. I feel like, you know, everyone's been kind of taking this whole thing day by day. Um, I guess, how are you, uh, today? What's going on? Um, you know, I, today's a, today's a good day. I woke up today and I got myself to do like a little yoga this morning, which is something that I've been trying to do more of that I like and made my promise, a promise to myself to do a little bit more of. And I feel like I always feel better when I do that. Um, but I don't know, every day has been like such a weird emotional roller coaster, and some days feel really hard and I can't literally get myself to do anything. And then, other ones, I don't know. I feel like I'm really learning to realize that, like, I don't. You don't really need that much to like be happy and 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 survive, other than alcohol. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Other than, other than like, you know, I'm kidding, but like, also no, you definitely need a good bottle of tequila in the house to get through all this. Yeah, I keep checking the time. Like, is it too early? Like, what? Are, like, what are the rules here? It's Friday. Yeah, or you're on the East Coast, right? Yeah, I'm in Philly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're getting there. It's almost that time. Yeah. No, we've got. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm on the East Coast too. So we've got. We've got like. I feel like we could have a drink in like two hours. Two hours, and that's fine. We're not yeah. animals, or monsters, or anything. No, that's not absurd. That's not ridiculous. You Wait, got, do do people yeah. do people tell you that you look like Ashton Kutcher? No, but I'll take because, it. Because somebody just commented in this and wrote, "Is that Ashton Kutcher?" And then I looked at your face, and like I kind of see it. If he shaved I, his head. I'll take it. Well, this is like accidental. Like my fiance tried to give me a quarantine haircut and she just like buzzed it all off. This is three weeks no. later. Like it's finally now growing back. I feel like so many people are just having like really bad botched jobs with it, with haircuts. My like, I, I, I helped my brother with a haircut and he was all just like so uneven and it's the worst thing I've ever seen. And, well, and like the beard from her dog is halfway through. So like it was shaved and then like clumps of hair. We're just like chilling yeah. and then we can like, wait for it. It's the worst when you catch it in natural light. I'm just like, that is not a look for anybody. Yeah. And I'm so sorry I just did that to your head, but <laughs> he, he eventually got over it. It looks, it started to grow back a little bit. Yeah, times are yeah. tough. I know, it's so crazy. Well, you've been so relatable and, um, and honest on social media, which I think is helping a lot of people, myself included, because I feel like what you're thinking and going through is what a lot of people are thinking. Like, uh, just how every day is different, even though it's the same, because like physically it's the same because we're still in our pajamas and at home, but like mentally we're going through different things and different emotions. And I feel like 
there's a part of me that's like, I should be doing more. I should be like learning another language and I should be, you know, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, frankly, it's hard to even like take a shower some days. Right. And I feel like you've been so open about that. Yeah, well, I just feel like at at the start of all this, I'm like, oh, my gosh, what, what, um, you know, like, this could be such a productive time, like, I finally can have the time to do the things that I've been really wanting to do and like, learning a different language and getting better at playing guitar and cooking more and like, maybe I'll paint and do some drawings and, and it's just like, the reality of that stuff is that times are so weird right now. And like, there, it's such a difficult time for like anxiety too. And it's like, it's really hard to feel creative and feel productive and feel inspired when you're not going out in the world and like hearing conversations and seeing people doing things and seeing new things and like, nothing's really triggering any like inspiration for me. Um, And so it's just been really hard when you also don't have any kind of schedule. It's not like anyone's like, get up you have work or you have class or you have a meeting for this or whatever it is it's like there's nowhere really to be so then that also just opens up such a another floodgates of anxiety because you're just like oh my god the potential is endless like I could do all these things but like I really don't want to do any of them (laughs) so I don't know and it's this weird thing of feeling like I should be like I should be doing something right now I should be feeling something right now like what is it why can't I figure it out and it's just, I don't know, it's, it's been really hard for me. It's been really weird, but it's, I, I feel like f- this last week, I feel like I've kind of really finally like surrendered to the fact that this is happening. And it's like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'm not gonna learn a new language in this amount of time, or I'm not gonna become a, like a great guitar player, but I, I, like I, I've attempted a couple things and like, at least I'm, I don't know. I'm just trying to listen more to like what I actually need and actually want to do. And sometimes it's just like, if that's just spend the day on the couch and like the only thing I managed to do is like FaceTime a couple friends and then that's the day that it was. Right. Absolutely. Like trying to forgive yourself a little bit for, for stuff like that. And you had a tweet recently. It's like, you write out like a to-do list and you end up doing none of it. Cause it's like, it's overwhelming. It's like, I have all these goals for the day. What I'm going to accomplish. Yep. In- I, I- I stopped, I stopped writing a to-do list because it was making me, I was like, I was talking to my therapist about it too, because I'm like, okay, I have this to-do list and I write down all the potential things that I could do. And then I maybe do like one of them or start one of them. And then I just feel like a flop at the end of the day. Cause I'm like, oh my God, right. I didn't get any of them done. And so I just stopped, I stopped yeah. writing it. And like, it's honestly, I have felt so much better the last week. Maybe that's like not a good thing for everybody to do. Cause a lot of people like to see it written out and like to feel like they've accomplished things. And I usually do, but it was, it's not been helpful for me. And it's, if anything, it's just been reminding me of all the things that I like set out to do and haven't been doing. Sure. So stopped, I stopped with the list and- um, I agree. You know. that's, that's how I usually function too. Like I have to like write things out and see it mentally just for myself. But like lately it's just like, maybe all I need today is just to get drunk and, and play a fun uh, <laughs> game on Zoom with family. Yeah, like maybe that's, that's the goal. You know what I mean? Literally, that, that, was, my, that was my Rocking goal for yesterday, and that's what I did yesterday. I, like, I got drunk with my family at night, and we played um, Scattergories. And Love it was so, Yeah, we played it with my parents, and it was just so funny to just, like, hear them coming. The, the words that my dad was making up, I'm like, where, where is your brain at? And clearly, it's <laughs> it, he's lost it in quarantine because his answers were so funny. But it was a really good time. And if anything, it's just made me appreciate, like, the people that I'm around and the people that I do have in my life and just the ones that I really care about. Yeah, that's super true. And I feel like couples are either getting super close during this time or it's the opposite. Like some right. couples are not going to get I feel like the, I feel like divorce rates are probably going to skyrocket, which is really crazy. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like there's going to be a baby boom from this, you know, like what else are people are just getting mm-hmm. it on and they're like, what else is there to do? Just drunk and bored. Yeah, just drunk and bored and making babies. So I don't know, times are weird. <laughs> there could be worse things. <laughs> yeah, it could be worse, honestly. But um, yeah, I, I, I feel that it's definitely, it, it's it's super trying for real. My family and I, we all wanted to literally like rip each other's heads off the first like two weeks of this. Okay. Yeah, we were all like, I hate you. And we're like, I hate you too. But now it's like, you know what? No, we really love each other. And, and it's been interesting to like, I, I'm, I've always been very sensitive to, um, 
people's energies. And so it's really made me realize how much your own energy like impacts a space, you know, when you're mm -hmm. being with, you're with the same people for that amount of time, it's like, I have to, I have to be conscious of the energy that I'm bringing to this space and to this environment, because it like, it can totally affect the entire room and like the entire house and the entire family. So um, it's made me more conscious of like my own space and what I, what I contribute. Sorry, I didn't. That's that. a really good point. But um, um, no, yeah. yeah, that's that's a really good point. And another post of yours that got my attention was obviously the post about uh, the saint and what what that meant to you. Uh, talk a little bit about that because that was really um, inspiring and some good news, some positive news came from from that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I grew up. Um, near Asbury Park and there is a venue in the town called The Saint which is a really really iconic place and um, people from like Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen um, to just even like local hometown ba bands it's kind of like a rite of passage if you're from Jersey to, to play The Saint and it's where I played my first ever live show with like original music that I had written and I remember selling it out to the the first time for like maybe about a hundred people and I was like oh my god this is it I'm doing it like this is like uh, this is this is my life I want to do this for the rest of my life and it felt like such a milestone in my career and I was I was always so nervous for those shows like the shakiest most nervous performer but it was such a place that like helped me get my legs as a performer and was like such such an important space for me and it's also just like it's the diviest of dive bars it's covered with just like layers of stickers and signatures and and the you know the bathrooms or the toilets like there's not even like a, a, a speck of porcelain left it's all sticker and it's like it's messy it's dirty and there's just it's so like rich with so many stories and history and I found out that because of everything happening right now it wasn't able to stay open they weren't able to afford being able to stay open and somebody launched launched a GoFundMe um, and they ended up you know as of now they've raised like thirty thousand dollars which is so crazy and um, yeah they they like announced like we're actually we're not going to close now so um that was that was really cool that was like a really sick moment for me and and i i just the second i found out i was like oh my god i have to I have to save the saint like this can't happen this place is so special and so important not just me but so many people and and young artists and i and i've always had this vision of like going back there and playing a show um because i haven't since since like 2000 and mm, maybe 17 or 16 maybe i haven't played a show there like that's the last time i did it so um i would just love to go back and and be there again that's incredible so here here's like your post before that saying like you know i'm not accomplishing anything you helped preserve this landmark in jersey like that's insane like i mean i don't know i don't know if i don't know everybody was posting about it i don't know how much contribution i made but i just felt like i owed it that to at least like let the people know that follow me that it's a really special place to me and and then i went on i went on the gofundme and i saw people sh like I, I looked at who was donating and people were writing their names and they were being like for Fletcher, for Fletcher, for Fletcher. And, <laughs> and I, I cried and it was so cute and it was really sweet. And I just think it's, you know, it's, I mean, some people were like, you know, people are dying and I'm like, my God, of course I know people are dying. This is such a, like a heartbreaking time for so many families and, and my, and, and my heart is broken for so many people that have lost anyone. And that's obviously the real stuff that matters is, is, um, people's lives. And, and I'm not, I, I didn't want anyone to think I was tone deaf to that situation. Cause trust me, I, I, I have, you know, a close family friend that, um, uh, like almost lost their life. And I know many people that, that know people who have passed. So, um, but it's definitely just a really hard time for small businesses and yeah. everyone is just like taking such a hit from this, both like professionally and emotionally. And, um, it's difficult. And I think it's There's so many layers to it. Yeah, there, there really is. And it's so hard to like grasp and understand that this is, that this is even real. Like, this is not something like I am such an anxious person and I, mm. I like plan for the worst in everything, but like, this is not a situation that my anxiety has ever prepared me for. Like this, this is not a situation that I ever even thought could actually be a thing. 
it's um, all that, everyone did it, that we're all just like the, around the world we're all indoors hiding from this invisible like monster yeah and the and the wearing the mask like that like freaks me out like going to the supermarket and everyone's just like freaking out and everyone's anxious and on edge and it's just weird i feel like i've been saying that a lot lately like every five seconds like it's just a weird freaking time and everyone's just kind of like wrapping their heads around it and yeah. i don't know yeah and i just think there's no real way to to like I, I don't know i think everybody's processing it in a different way and however you are is totally fine it, you shouldn't i think the thing that i was doing at first was i was like seeing so many other artists like posting clips of them being in their home studios and and writing songs and i was like oh, I like I should I could do that I could be doing that those are the people that are going to come out on top in this time the ones that are like making all the, the use of this time and and I was just comparing myself to to everybody or people that were posting their workouts and I'm like I literally can't even like get off the couch right now like why I'm feeling really mad and frustrated with myself and then I just got to a point where I was just like you know what I'm not I'm not those people I'm never going to be those people and those people are never going to be me and we can't, I no, nobody feels an emotion the exact same way so um just kind of like have given myself more space to just to go through it how how I'm kind of gr going through it and it's just and we're all and we're, it's so crazy that the whole like every the whole world is going through this it's it actually yeah. blowing my mind yeah and it's like okay if I can just make it through this with like my health my family's health and like my sanity then I feel like I'm doing okay you know I don't have to like yeah be so hard and, myself to do, do more than that and I think everyone is just like, like it coming out of this i i never again will take for granted like being in a bar and, and hear seeing people laugh and like taking shots with each other or being in a venue and hearing like a roaring audience you know or like in a in a stadium somewhere and even just like as a if i'm a fan at a show it's like i will never again take those that 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 for granted it's just the it's little thing that it's like, after quarantine yeah yeah exactly like it, it's it's just given me a totally new perspective of all the things that I'm like, whoa, I really miss that. And I really love that. And yeah, I think it's, it's making all of us like reframe our way of thinking and, and what really matters and what's important and just making me so much more grateful for the things that I did have before this, that I just kind of like didn't, you know, really think twice about. It's just, just like driving past a, a down the street and seeing like a crowded bar. You know, you're just right. you, like, I, I miss seeing that. I miss seeing people together. I miss pe people laughing. And um, yeah, before before all this, like that wouldn't even like register in my head. Like that wouldn't. Even, oh, okay. Right. But like now, it's like a it's crowded like... restaurant, and I'm gonna the second I see that again, I'll be like, guys, I love you all. <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing Keep it. Drinking, Everyone's getting Yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> This is Everyone really getting a hug. I'm talking to every Lyft driver. I want to hear all about their, you know, baby daddy stories. I want to hear everything. Everything. I went to I went to a um like a health food store the other day to go try to find some like vitamin C or something. And I, the 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 um cashier and I were like we they make you stay like 10 feet back and mm. you have to literally like toss your credit card and like toss it back to you like nobody has any communication but i she just started talking about something and i just i stayed there for like 40 minutes just listening and we just talked at a distance <laughs> and she was just talking about where she's from and she used to live in india and then she moved to new york and i know know all about her like cat and a surgery that it had and i was just like asking <laughs> everybody about everything cuz i'm just like wow you have such a story and how weird that our paths cross in this one moment in this random town and like i also just miss hearing people tell like talk and so i'm just like just tell me whatever the tell me whatever it is um <laughs> so i feel you on asking about your your uh lift drivers baby daddies because i'm yeah. the same thing i'm talking head. to my mailman the waiter, like when the waiter sits down to give you the specials, by all means, come on in, sit down, make you feel yeah. comfortable. Yeah, usually people are like, oh, get the specials over with. Nobody wants it. You're going to rip us off anyway. Get through the, <laughs> that, the fact that the potatoes are scalloped and they're drizzled with truffle <laughs> oil. Like, enough. Thank you, next. But now I'm just going to be like, tell it, tell it one more time. Tell it a second yeah. time. Tell it a third time. <laughs> so true. And maybe that's one of the silver linings from this. It's like, you know, we're going to have a greater appreciation for, for life and, yeah. and everyone who's, who's in this life. So 
I feel like you're gonna have to draw some positives as hard as it is, you know, every day. Yeah, so. it's more patient. I think more patience. It's like everyone is like, I've got places to go. I've got people to see. The world revolves around me. I'm doing this and that. And it's like, no, actually, the world is at flourishing without us in it right now. You know, there's like, right. the air is cleaner. Pollution levels are down. There's dolphins. I don't even know if this is true. There, but apparently, there's dolphins in, Ve in in the Venice canals. Who knows? <laughs> Somebody fact check me. That might not be right. But. <laughs> Um, I don't, the world is like perfectly flourishing and existing without us in it right now. So it's like, it doesn't need us. So right. then that's such an ego check because here we are thinking that the world revolves around us when actually it's like doing so much better without us in it. So it makes you think that when we return, it's like, no, we should be really humbled and gracious to even be existing on this planet. And I hope it just makes everyone like slow down and give somebody else the time of day. Because you don't know, you know, because like human life is so precious and um, we all have a story. And like, I'm really, I feel so much more invested than in other people's stories now, more so than I ever have before. And, and the world is healing. Like the, Philly and Jersey now has, have wildlife probably now. Like they probably have like the water is clear. It's a whole thing. Yeah. The water's so gross and gray in Jersey. And I saw a picture recently that it's like, like in my hometown where I'm from and somebody sent a picture and I'm like, oh, I've never seen that water like look kind of blue, you know, like look <laughs> a little less gray. Um, right. so, yeah, the Schuylkill River in Philly is a little less green, I feel like now. So I think that's probably a good thing. Yeah. So I'll it's, take it. Yeah, we'll take, listen, we'll take what we can get. It's just, you know, I hope that we, everyone doesn't go, just come back from this and just be like, just bombard like a bunch of monsters, you know, but I don't know. I think from everyone that I've talked to, that everybody has shared a similar perspective of that. It's really made them rethink the way that they kind of just want to like move about in the world. Agreed. I think so too. I think a lot of people have that same perspective, which is good. In fact, I think you have a lot of people that you have, you have to respond to via text. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do. I have to, I have to prove to people that it's me. They're like, is this a bot? I'm like, no, bitch, it's me. Look, no, no. <laughs> here's another video of my dad to, to drive home this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry, I'm plugging my phone in because it's going to die. So, um, yeah, so I'll let you go respond to uh, your text. You're so freaking awesome. I think Aww. everyone just needs Thanks, needs uh, your energy. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like just your presence yeah. alone is, is very helpful. That's so kind. I really appreciate you. And uh, I'm glad we figured out how to get me into this chat because that would have been the ultimate buzzkill of 2020. Way more of a buzzkill than coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> just me talking about my Primark sweater, just my face. Like, it's showing the cat. Showing the cat. No, honestly, the I, was cat. Enjoy I was enjoying it. I was enjoying your stories. <laughs> They're great. After after this quarantine, you got to come back to Philly. Hell yeah. Say what's up. Though. We'll do it. And we'll, uh, we'll take a tequila shot together. Love it. Cool. Hopefully soon. Okay. Hopefully soon. I know. I really hope so. I really, really hope so. Nothing but positive vibes for you. Yes. And uh, love you guys incredible. over at TDY. Thanks for having me on. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah. We love you. Talk All to right. you later. Later. Bye, everyone. Bye.